Hi, I'm Max Spainauer. And I'm Troy McCormick. Welcome to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. Welcome to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. Today we're in Columbus, Indiana, and we're visiting with the Indiana Association of Taxidermists. Did I get that right? You got that right. All right. And this is a group of guys that we, all of us that hunt and fish, we all have our friend that's the taxidermist, but they have a professional organization and they've come together for a weekend of uh, training seminars and judging their work. So it's kind of a, an interesting blend of guys competing with each other but learning from, from each other. That's right. And yes. tell me just a little bit about why someone would belong to this organization and all about what you're doing this weekend. Okay. Um, the organization is about education. We, as you can see around or you'll see, there, there's a lot of competition pieces. Competition is a small part of it. Um, what we're striving to do is educate taxidermists to do better work uh, understand anatomy of the animals and put the correct anatomy into the mounts. So that's what we strive to do is, is to uh, have seminars. Uh, we have uh, folks come from all over this country and even from out of this country to judge the pieces, to help teach, uh, put on seminars and just make uh, a taxidermist understand the the mount from the inside out. Okay. A lot of guys look at the the beautiful animal, but they don't see the what's on the inside. And so that's what we're striving to do in the association. Also, we bring people together just to have fun. Yeah. Uh, it's a real relaxed group. We have a it's more like a, a family. We've got, we've got members that have been here for years, and then we you know we have guys that have come wow. first time this year, and they've done uh, you know they've met people. We've got some repeats once they get here and they they in, get interact involved and interact a little bit they come back and well, it's now i know i know we've got about 80 taxidermists here this weekend mm -hmm. how many taxidermists are there in indiana and how many belong to the organization well um the the amount of taxidermists that are licensed in the state of indiana is around 700 okay. currently um and then at any given time they've probably been a member okay uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, folks that, um, that what, what I'll call the old timers, that we have a few of them here that were instrumental in starting the association. How long ago? 30, 32 years, I think, is how, old we, how long Indiana's been around. Competition taxidermy started 30 to 35 years ago. Okay. Um, but uh, so we've got members from various, you know, some of left come back you know uh, some have never left and then you get guys that every you know every other year they'll be here right. or they'll, they'll drop off for a little while you know they get busy they're doing get, other they stuff they get busy family you know work and such but now brett you made the distinction of saying uh licensed yes. taxidermist mm -hmm. What does it take really to become a tax? You know, I think other than when we're all growing up and they love to hunt and fish, we either think about being a, uh, a conservation officer, game warden, or a taxidermist mm -hmm. at some point. Mm -hmm. what, yeah. and you, you see the ads in the magazines, become a taxidermist. What does it take to become a taxidermist and licensed in Indiana? Well, in Indiana, it takes fifteen dollars to become a taxidermist. Why aren't we all taxidermists? Yeah. You know, <laughs> it I mean, takes more than that. It, obviously, it's, yeah. it's it's no more than going and buying a hunting license. Okay. You know, but um, it's cheaper it, than a hunting. It's license. cheaper <laughs> than a hunting license. Uh, it's a desire okay. to. Uh, a lot of guys I've heard a lot of guys tell me, well, you know, I got into taxidermy because I can only hunt three months out of the year, but I like the animals right. and. You know, I want more than that. So yeah. they they look at taxidermy as a way to it's an extension ex of their season. Extend their season, mm -hmm. and you know they appreciate the animals, even though you know they're hunters. Yeah, they harvest game to eat. 
uh, but they still appreciate animals. It's an artistic kind of appreciation, and yes. I think an, uh, an expression of that that love of nature. Right. And, of and it animals. is an art. It's, a, it's exactly it's an art, and um, a lot of guys that do taxidermy are artists. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they may do flat work, paint flat work. They might sculpt. They might, you know, do other aspects of art. But the field of taxidermy, um, they love it, yeah. and the, you know that's where their passion is. That's and that's what they want to portray in their work. Yeah. Is is not just just the animal, but they want to show the animal in a natural habitat. There's sculpting that goes with it's it. It's more than a mount. It's more than a mount. Yeah. Yeah. Now, okay, you, you can buy a license for $15. You can buy a license for $15. How do you learn to be a taxidermist, though? I mean, can, can you come to this, this workshop and learn some of it, or do you, do you, do you apprentice with someone who already is? Um, back years ago, before the Internet, mm -hmm. um, the only true way to learn taxidermy other than trial and error, yeah. was to apprentice. Okay. Um, the taxidermists, prior to the internet, even well, 30, 30 years ago, it was a closed door secret society. They didn't share with each yeah. other. Um, but when they started the associations, then that brought groups of people together. They started sharing techniques. They started talking with each other. Right. And then when the internet came along, that opened the door up for people that are interested to find a source of information. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from there it goes to spending time in workshops with other taxidermists. You can buy videos. A lot of the taxidermists today make videos, okay. DVDs, uh, on techniques. Online training seminars. There's online training. Um, you know, you've got YouTube. Some guys do stuff for YouTube, and you can. There's, there's many avenues today that there wasn't 30 years ago. But it still comes down to it's a hands-on art form. It's a hands-on art form. From it's from, like from a, scraping it's a, hides yeah. to getting them tanned to stretching them. Exactly. It's like a carpenter with a piece of wood. It's no different. It's just a skin you're using instead of a piece of wood. Okay. So now yeah. I know, and I know a lot of guys they pay a lot of attention to to the whiskers or the the, the hand painting of the scales on the fish, mm -hmm. or or some really go all out with trying to create that natural scene to set the mount in. So there's yeah. kind of oh almost your uh, entry level taxidermists who are yeah. just doing the mounts for themselves, yes. their friends, mm -hmm. and then then they start charging for it. And then they start paying a little more attention, learning a little bit more, mm -hmm. kind of gaining more experience mm -hmm. and notoriety. And that's what our association's here for, mm -hmm. is to help nurture that piece of it, to give them more avenues to reach their yep. goals. And um, most people do start out doing it for his brother or his right. cousin or yeah. whatever, but um, eventually they get to the point where they feel comfortable enough to do work for the public. Okay. And then they branch out and start making some money with their work. Life Essentials in Brookston, Indiana provides the products you need to become more independent. Products like our journeyman wheelchair provide all-terrain access for the hunter and all-around outdoorsman. Every year thousands of people are born with or acquire disabilities. Whether your special needs are for residential, commercial, agricultural, or just enjoying the outdoors once again, we customize our lifts and mobility products to fit your needs. We're raising you to new heights. Call today and we'll work with you to take back your life. Blastmasters of Indianapolis, Indiana is your source for custom stone sandblasting. We etch limestone markers for gardens and home landscaping projects to pet memorial stones and address markers. We offer brick pavers for fundraising projects and large monument stones for memorials and parks. Contact us today for your custom sandblasted Indiana limestone markers and memorial projects. Cave Country Canoes, located in the heart of Indiana's cave country, offers a variety of canoe rental trips from half-day outings for beginners to two-day adventures for the more experienced enthusiast. Our canoe trips follow the gently meandering Blue River through the wooded hills of southern Indiana. Abundant wildlife and great fishing opportunities abound. Go to CaveCountryCanoes.com for more information about our canoe and kayak trips. Your next adventure is just a paddle away. After serving our country, serious injury shouldn't prevent our veterans from enjoying life. 
Paralyzed Veterans of America works with veterans to ensure that their health care and benefit needs are met, provides assistance with career needs, and offers challenging and rewarding activities. The Kentucky and Indiana chapter of PVA is also proud to provide adaptive sports and activities for its members. Paralyzed Veterans of America depends on the public's generosity to support its programs. Make your donation today and help give back to our nation's paralyzed heroes. Well, Rick, we're here today in Columbus, Indiana. It's the uh, Taxidermist Convention. We've got a lot of uh, different mounts here, and I know a little bit about uh, some judging and stuff that goes on here, but you know a lot about it. Can you fill us in? Well, I'm one of the judges here that the Indiana Association of Taxidermists has invited me out. My specialty is fish, and we also judge reptiles. There's several other judges at the show, and what their jobs are is you'll have a bird judge who will judge birds from waterfall to upland game to, to turkeys. We'll also have a mammal judge who will judge all the large mammals and the small mammals, and we'll also have a game head judge who will judge whitetails and game heads as well. Oh, okay. One of the things that's, uh, I think, pretty important about an association like the Indiana Association is that it really promotes the betterment of the outdoors. It gives the opportunity for the public to come here and view this beautiful taxidermy work, but it also gives the taxidermist an opportunity to be seen by the public. Well, and that's great uh, because there's so much to see here. I noticed, uh, I talked to uh, David Moss, a conservation officer, so you even brought him in and he is totally different because he's not an expert like you guys in the mounts, but he also um, what, bit, or he, he looks and judges about uh, environmental. Is that what he does? You know, that's one of the interesting things, and that's a really great question that you've asked there, is that sometimes shows will bring in a conservation officer, or they'll, they'll bring in different people from Ducks Unlimited or, or Trout Unlimited or the different types of organizations that are out there to give their opinion and their thought on what they see. But one of the most important things that we find out as far as the taxidermy community is concerned, that universal truth is universal truth. A good looking piece is a good looking piece. <laughs> well, that's true, that's true. And, and, and there's different divisions in here, right? There absolutely is. We start off from the youth division, where it's 16 years old and under, right into the amateur division. And amateurs are folks that don't do it necessarily for a living, but they want to get into the, to the craft and to the trade of taxidermy. We have professional division taxidermists and they're more uh, licensed taxidermists to do this for a living or do this for pay and then you have what we call a master's division these are folks that competed in the professional division and have done well over the years to a point where they've achieved and earned that level oh really yeah well I noticed that earn is a big word here because I have seen some of the judges that get up there with a, a, a pin light looking in the nostrils running rods up in them looking at the eyes and the duck work and all that I mean you it's this is not something they just go oh that's a pretty mount well as far as judging is concerned that's that's an interesting uh, avenue to, to head down when you look at it I've been judging basically since 1989. Uh, when I first got into taxidermy in the late 70s, my background was as a fisheries biologist. I used to work for the state of New Hampshire as a, oh, really? as a hatchery biologist. Um, I, I always played around with taxidermy and dabbled into it, and I wanted to first see you know, myself, geez, uh, does my background and knowledge equate to what a good fish looks like? And the first competition I ever went to, the gentleman who judged me told me it was the worst fish he had ever seen at a competition. Oh and I thought, wow, geez, you know, I, I thought I would know. So the backgrounds that we all bring to the table, some folks that are judges have just been doing it for a long time and have really earned their way up the ladder. And some other folks come at it from uh, an ornithology point of view or a, a ichthyology point of view from, from my perspective. But most of the people who get involved with taxidermy from a judging point of view just want to help other people so we can all share and enjoy the same thing that we do. Well, I noticed you have to have either, you have to have a duck's back with the water better run off or your broad <laughs> shoulders or whatever analogy you want to make, but you, you're, they're going to be critical. And so mm -hmm. if you come in here with, and you're an amateur, they're going to tell you what you need to do to make it better, right? Sure. And everybody I've ever seen of these, um, of the competitors, they're all open for the cr criticism or the critique of all these things and I think that is what's great when a guy can come in and let somebody pick it apart and then all of a sudden he can improve his work mm -hmm. that means a lot 
You know, when we look at a score sheet, there's a couple things that are important that taxidermists look at. We look at uh, the overall presentation of a piece. Is it desirable? Does it look good? Would you want to have it in your bathroom at your house? Okay. <laughs> the other thing that we look at is anatomy. That's the, that's the meat and potatoes part of what we do. We want to make sure that the animal that you're depicting looks like the animal that it should look like. The other part of it is craftsmanship. Are we using the most modern techniques that we can use, the safest techniques, the techniques that we can use? So the end user who has it in their home is assured that they have a quality piece. The biggest piece, I think, and, and I'll speak for myself personally as sure. a judge, is that when we have this criteria of a score sheet, the big thing that we really try to do is not just tell them what they're doing wrong, but we want to help them out so they, they stay involved with the outdoors and bring their family in and raise their kids in it. And what we like to do is point out what they're doing well and where they need a little improvement. And at the end of the day, everybody goes home like a big family. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, that's awesome. Rick, I, I appreciate it. I, uh, Troy and I are enjoying ourselves, and we're looking forward to seeing some more mounts. Welcome to the family of taxidermy. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> My name is Antonio Alfaro, and uh, I work for Tohican Glass Eyes. I'm vice president. We make the, the widest variety of glass eyes in the world and the highest quality. Uh, we use optical quality crystal. Um, everything from from the uh, uh, inexpensive eyes all the way up to individual custom made hand painted most of them are all hand painted items we're supplying a lot of eyes to supply companies who then resell them along with their other products like forms and and everything else we also supply to individual taxidermists uh, uh, these items and a lot of custom items just to to get that individual look of an individual animal uh, as opposed to uh, just a general look for that species. And what kind of species do you provide eyes for? Oh, any kind, any kind. I mean, uh, for sheep, deer, bobcats, birds, fish, uh, reptiles, uh, even really unusual creatures. Uh, back at the shop, I'm, I'm working on uh, eyes for a lot of sculptures as well, not just taxidermy. Uh, so eyes for giant squid, um, oversized human eyes for, for puppets and other sculptures, up to eight inches in diameter, uh, down to hummingbird eyes that are only two millimeters in diameter. So it's really a broad, broad range. I have a whole new line of, of products here. This is the, the Quantum VX Prestige. These are, are items that are really designed for the commercial taxidermist. They're, they have really superb quality and uh, detailing in them, but I'm able to offer them at a very good price because they, um, I developed a whole new process uh, with patents pending to be able to, to do these eyes with uh, superb detail. And all the colors are made out of glass and, and fired, fired in high temperature. So uh, it's, you know, it gets complicated. We actually even develop our own uh, glass enamels for doing that. And then on the other side of the spectrum, uh, these are new uh, eyes that I'm working on, uh, just super detailed eyes for sheep and uh, later on for deer and for other species. This is uh, going to be our new Tohican Legend series. And these, um, the other eyes, uh, we're talking about commercial taxidermy, were nine and a half dollars a pair. These are thirty-five dollars a pair, and uh, uh, it's just uh, that different level of detail. For our viewers, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Indiana Outdoor Adventures. Lawrence County is an unexpected destination found in the heart of southern Indiana rolling hills, offering recreational landscapes, a rich limestone heritage, and unique outdoor experiences. This area is limestone country, well known for limestone quarries and stone carving heritage. It's also the home of Spring Mill State Park, geocaches, the scenic East Fork of the White River, and underground caverns. Plan your adventure at limestonecountry.com or call 800-798-0769. Looking for adventure? Marengo Cave has it all. Explore the underground wonders of Marengo Cave with our two easy walking tours or go on an adventurous cave exploring trip with hard hats and lots of mud. Kids will love discovering gemstones at the Cave Springs Mining Flume. This U.S. National Natural Landmark has been open to the public since 1883 and provides breathtaking views of underground cave formations. 
Visit us online at MaringoCave.com and plan your visit today. Hi, Jim Donlin here from Westside Bait and Tackle in downtown Indianapolis. We are one of the oldest and best stocked bait shops in Indiana. Since 1951, we've offered a large selection of live baits, including minnows, nightcrawlers, bee moth, and more, all at a low, low price. We have a complete selection of name brand rods, reels, lures, and tackle. We also have a full service rod and reel repair center, so stop on in and see us soon. For more information, go to www.westsidebaitshop.com. Follow Indiana Outdoor Adventures online with Facebook, Twitter, and our website. Stay up to date with our exciting adventures as we're out in the field filming and meeting new people. From news updates and announcements to Twitter posts by co-host Troy McCormick. Why wait until the next season of shows when you can follow us as we're filming them? Join us online to get the most current news on Indiana Outdoor Adventures. The Old Goat Trading Post in Bloomingdale, Indiana offers not only traditional fur hides, hats, and mountain man-like apparel, but beautifully crafted spirit hides. Artistically sculpted from elk, moose, deer, and buffalo hides, they are the perfect wall hanging for your home or vacation cabin. The shaved hair sculpture and original painted scenes combine to create a natural canvas and work of art. Visit www.oldgoattrading.com for more information. Hillbilly Custom Game Calls, offering the finest and precision-made diaphragm mouth calls for wild turkey hunting. Each call is handmade and gauge-stretched for exact tension each and every time. Select from double and triple read calls like you've never heard before. We also have an assortment of handmade wood box calls, glass and slate top pot calls, and predator calls that will make us your source for all of your custom game call needs. Look for us online at www.hillbillygamecalls.com. I am going to show you our auto tanner that we make. Um, these are all made in Wisconsin. Um, most of it is made right at our, our shop in Edgerton, Wisconsin. Um, what it allows is taxidermists, and I have non-taxidermists that use it also, to tan a hide in four hours, not have to send their hide out and take complete control over the process. Um, the basis of it is really, really simple. It's um, you get your cape out and you split the eyes, ears, nose and lips, turn your ears, um, do a rough flushing on it, and then all you need to do is take a gallon of lukewarm water, which I have right over here. Lukewarm is key. You don't want it too hot and you don't want it too cold because it's got to absorb the crystals. So you put it in there and then you add a pound of crystals per hide. So I'm going to do a scrap of a hide, so I'm just going to do one pound. If you're going to tan two to three hides, you would use two to three pounds, two to three pounds, and three gallons, two gallons of water accordingly. So once you have this, yeah, where I put my scalpel, I'm just going to break it open in here. You put it in there, and then you just kind of mix it around a little bit. The chemicals are non-toxic. You don't have to worry about pickling, acid, septic safe, drain safe, dump them right down the sewer. So that's a really, really nice thing. Um, I'm a mom, I have three kids. I don't want buckets of safety acid and pickle laying around my house for my kids to get into. My kids have poured this for me at the work. So it's great to not have to worry about that in your house. So this is a green scrap that I took and got ready last week and put in the freezer. You can see I did a pretty good flushing out of it because I'm not going to do any flushing here. So I'm just going to put it in there and just really swish it around, get it nice and wet. And then I take my lid and I put it on there. They normally either have to send their hides out and wait for them to come back or they have to do a different type of tanning method, usually involving a pickle. There's not a lot of flexibility. You have to take it out so often, you have to stir it so often. I could leave this overnight. I can leave this for a day. Kid gets sick, got to go pick them up from school. Firefighter has to go on a fire call. Farmer's cattle get out. It can stay in here and you're not going to wreck a hide. That, I think, is the most important thing and that it involves. How long does it take in there compared to doing it another way? Four hours versus two to three days to do one cape. I can do two to three capes in complete four hours. For myself, I'm still learning the taxidermy part of it. It takes me a little bit longer because I have a lot more fleshing and things to do with it, and I'm a little bit slower. But for guys that know what they do, they're mounting two to three deer a day using this. 
um, non-taxidermists that do rugs, um, big cattle rugs, a nice brindle throws and stuff. People are buying this and doing them themselves. Cattle farmers are doing them themselves. They don't even do taxidermy, but they're using it. Um, and the cost is so effective. You have your initial cost, but then your chemicals aren't much at all. And this is what it looks like when it comes out. It's got lots of stretch for people, so you get extra stretch out of the hide. And it's just a really nice feel to work with. If you wanted to, you could do a, pre, uh, a soft tan after this process, um, lay it out, softening oil, and break it as it dries. But this is what a hide will look like after it comes out of the auto tanner. As far it's just a, it's just a high tanning yeah. layer on. Yeah, this is a hide for taxidermy purpose. Um, there's a lot more steps to do a garment tan or a soft tan. There's kind of a misconception and a myth out there that you can get a soft tan in the auto tanner. You can get a soft tan no matter what method you use, quick tan, easy 100, cream tan. you got to break it after it's done being tanned. That involves laying the hide out, spreading an oil of some sort. We use our buck tan softening oil letting it dry to about 75 to 80% dry, and then breaking it as it dries. And the best way to describe breaking is taking a paper bag, crumpling it, crumpling it, crumpling it, and it eventually is soft. That's the same thing that you do with a hide. So that's kind of a misconception about the soft tan. Well, tell, tell me about the organization now. How much does it cost to join? Where can I go online to find out more information if I want to get uh, mm -hmm. become part of the Indiana Association of Tax Okay, you can go to www. Uh, Indiana taxidermy taxidermist.org uh, we have a website um, board members officers all our numbers are there you can contact any of us at any time um, you can uh, find us in, in a taxidermy.net it's a website that yeah. is run by a supply company McKenzie taxidermy does that um, Great. Now, I know that I've been on the website. There are pictures of last mm -hmm. year's seminar, mm -hmm. so there will probably be pictures of this year's there seminar. Will be. Uh, tomorrow, uh, this is a three-day event, two and a half days. Two and a half days. And tomorrow you do have uh, some time open for the public to come in. That's correct. We have, a, we have it open to the public every Sunday from 10 to 2 is our typical time. And, and the public gets to vote. The public gets to vote. Yeah, they, they get to vote on the People's a, Choice Award. People's Choice Award. It's a uh, mammal a fish, a bird, and a game head, I believe is how it's set up. Okay. So. Great. Well, I'll tell you yeah. what, there's just a, a, a wealth of quality mounts here, and it, it's not just deer heads. I mean, we've got life-size deer, we've got life-size bear, we've got bobcat, wolverine, wolves and coyotes and raccoons and snapping turtles. I mean, there, there is a wide range of very, I mean, this is the best that the taxidermists have done in the, the last year or so. Uh, that they've submitted for competition. Yeah. So, you know, it really is something, if you want to come see some good quality work, this is the opportunity to see a wide array it is. of tax it is. mounts. Yes, it is. Hey, Brad, thank you very much. Thank uh, you for, we've been thank in, you for coming and visiting with us. Yeah.